Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I want to share a few easy ways to start getting wrist movement back after you've had a wrist fracture. So first things first, you wanna make sure that you are cleared by your physician and an x-ray that shows that your wrist fracture is fully healed um, before you start any of these exercises. And of course, I cannot possibly diagnose you um, through YouTube, so make sure that you have had um, approval from a physician or a physical therapist or an occupational therapist before you begin doing any of these exercises, okay? Perfect. Let's get into it. Okay, guys, so sorry for the change of scenery. Uh, I could not find any angles in my bedroom to show you the exercises that I want to show you where it didn't make my room end up looking like a total mess. So we are outside in the backyard. Um, it's a little bit windy out, so hopefully the audio quality is okay. You can definitely let me know in the comments if this video sucked because of it, it's fine. Um, we can always remake it and try and figure out a different place to film. Uh, yeah, so sorry in advance. Anyway, the first exercises that I want to show you are active exercises, which means that you are going to be using your affected arm to do the movements on its own. Okay, so the first exercise is wrist flexion and extension, which just means bending the wrist forward and then backwards. Okay, so I'm going to show you again kind of here on the side. So from the side view of my arm, I'm going to bend my wrist forwards as far as I can. Okay, that's what it looks like from the front view. And then that's the flexion component, right? And then we go ahead and pull the wrist back and just go in as far as you possibly can. Um, you know, you can do it both hands at once. So you can kind of see the difference between your affected side and your non-affected side. Um, and that way you can kind of work towards getting closer to the other non-broken arm um, back to your normal movement okay so that's flexion and extension the next movement is radial and ulnar deviation so it's i like to think of it as kind of like a little side wave so from the back view of the hand ulnar deviation is tipping towards the pinky side of the wrist and that's what it looks like from the side it's kind of a wonky view it's like a sideways movement and then radial deviation is the opposite way okay i can't relate Ugh, twist my arm that much in that direction but it's just essentially moving the wrist side to side side to side okay so those are the two active exercises that I really like to give um, again you can have people do them flat on the table radial and ulnar deviation works pretty well that way um, you can have them do it you know forward backward however you want to do it whatever works best for you the next type of stretches that I'm going to show you are prolong pro blah, 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 blah. prolonged low load stretches, which means that you're going to be using your other hand to help out um, as well as gravity a little bit. It just means that you're taking a low load, so you're not pushing to the point where it's, you know, extremely super painful. You're just pushing to the point of tension or discomfort for a prolonged period of time or a longer duration stretch. So I recommend people do this um, while they're watching TV or YouTube videos or something where you can just kind of be distracted. You can kind of let your mind go, relax into the stretch, set a timer um, for a couple minutes, and then you can kind of, you know, get it done quickly that way. Um, I think it's easiest to do it over the edge of a countertop, a table, um, your lap, uh, an armrest, anything like that. I don't have a great view here for you guys, but I'm gonna use like kind of this flat edge here to show you. So, ugh, my legs are dying. I'm doing like a wall, wall freaking squat. Everything's fine. I'm dying. Okay, so let's, sorry about this. this is horrible videography. Anyway, my arm's resting over the edge. I'm gonna go into a flexion stretch. So I'm gonna actively move my hand down into flexion or bending the wrist as far as I can. I'm gonna use my other hand to give it a little bit of a push. So that's all I'm doing is just pushing it down really gently. You wanna keep it rested down, but I'm just showing you up here so you can actually, you know, see what I'm doing. Um, you just push the wrist down to the point of like discomfort and then you're gonna hold it there. You wanna usually hold it for about 30 seconds, sometimes a little bit longer to a minute to three minutes. 
make sure you're not getting any numbness and tingling in your fingers. Um, the way that I like to do the stretch into extension, I just think it's a bit awkward to kind of pull in that direction. Again, gravity's not really helping you out. Um, and it just feels a little bit awkward. So I tend to recommend like a prayer stretch. So what that looks like, oh, okay, I'm fine, is putting the hands, the palms flat together like that, right? And then you're gonna sink down into the stretch, lowering your elbows down and out, and you have to keep your palms together. So it's cheating if you open them up like this. But as you get lower and closer down, you can see how extended the wrists get. It's a really great stretch to hold um, for a few seconds to a minute um, and just help you build that wrist extension back, okay? Okay, and the final exercise that I have for you, which is really good, not only after a wrist fracture, but any type of wrist injury um, or surgery, especially something to do kind of with like TFCC injuries, um, TFCC repairs, all those kinds of things. Again, you don't want to do them until that you're, till you, blah, blah, blah. I can't talk today. I don't know what the deal is. Um, until anyway, you don't want to do them until your physician or your occupational or physical therapist tells you they are safe to do. Um, but I like to have my patients do wrist alphabets a lot. So the key with the wrist alphabet is it cannot be a small movement. So what I have people do is I have them hold a pen, um, kind of like a dagger, like kind of that, you know, psycho grip. Uh, rather than an actual pen grip because if they're holding it like an actual pen They're gonna just use real small movements. We want them to be big So grasp it like you mean it. Okay firmly in the hand um, and then you're gonna kind of point It forwards and you're gonna do the wrist alphabet. So you're writing the letters a B C and so on. Um, and you can see how much movement I'm actually really getting in my wrist. It's big, solid movements. It's stable, it's smooth. It's really great for working on proprioception, um, which people a lot of times you lose after they've had like a wrist injury. So again, it's those big, nice rounded movements. Um, it's helping them develop uh, kind of motor control and like smoothness of the movement as well. So. That's another exercise that I use a lot uh, that they can do at home as well because it's easy to remember, right? Everyone knows the alphabet, so they can do that anywhere as well. So I like to include it in a home program too. Um, yeah, so those are kind of the three major wrist exercises, basic wrist exercises, I should say, that I like to give people after they've had a wrist fracture. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe so that you never miss um, another hand therapy video again. And we'll see you next time. Thank you for watching.